You're going to frame the piece, and most watercolors are, are framed. They don't hang, you know, without a frame. Um, but it's still, it's still nice. You'll see the effect. Okay. And, and the thing is, um, if you were to frame your piece, you're going to want a little edge. And it helps you define your painting area and staying within that. Um, because if you get it framed, you're not going to want the frame. Well, the frame's going to overlap a little bit and probably mat will overlap a little bit. Mm -hmm. So we know that this area is our painting area. And you can always trim it if you wanted to. But this usually pads of paper come in a standard size, which coincides with uh, whatever framing you're going to get. So you don't have to get a custom cut frame. That's by good. the way, nine by twelve. We're gonna let the Smithsonian figure out the framing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> sounds good. Okay, and then everybody's got their water. Mm -hmm. uh, not and make sure. Here's a little tip: make sure that your paint brush water is nowhere near whatever you might be drinking. <laughs> Well, I asked Jeff if he got non-toxic paint, paint but. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's never it's always a rude awakening when you're in the zone and you're painting and you you grab a sip of your drink and it ends up being your paint water. It's yeah. It, so yeah. the goal is to end up with not a blue tongue. <laughs> right, not a popsicle tongue, but a paint right. tongue. So we have our water. Uh, you have paper towels or rag or something like that. Yep. Yes, and then you've got a pencil, just yeah. any old kind of pencil. I'm going to do this painting all with one brush. And this is wow. the brush I'm using. It's just a round uh, on the small side. This is a number eight brush, and it is for watercolor. And I've got my paints. I know we all have different, uh, different palettes, different... Uh, paint selections, but we'll, a lot of the color choices will be up to you, as long as we don't get muddy with our colors, and I'll tell you a little bit about that. And then possibly this, this particular watercolor paint set that I got is a traveling one, and it comes with a, a little insert that's a, a palette. You could use a paper plate if you want, or oftentimes I just use part of the plastic container to mix a little color. Mm -hmm. Or if you want, you can mix your color in your paints as long as you, after it's all done, you clean your thing and you can do that with a wet paper towel, clean your uh, actual paints. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're doing landscape, which is a horizontal uh, orientation of the paper because we are going to paint a landscape. And I had done I had done this one the other day just as a trial. Um, I wanted to do just like some mountains with kind of a sunsetty sky and then some sort of a silhouette. And I think we're going to kind of use that as the first painting. We may end up doing several different ones and experimenting. The last one uh, will be really experimental. So this one is a little more structured, just to kind of give you the feel of what the watercolors can and can't do and how to manipulate them. So I'm going to kind of use this, but we're going to, so we're going to start with our pencil. Everybody's ready with their paper. Yep, yep, and landscape. So really, really light line, not heavy at all. And you're almost going to just kind of drag the pencil tip across the paper. And going about, I'd say, uh, a little more than halfway down. Don't go exactly halfway down, but a little bit more than halfway down. And we're gonna draw in a range of uh, mountains in the very, very back background. So don't get too detailed. And it's gonna be as simple as just a few little humps and bumps and some come up and some come down and just a light light line like that like so can you see that oh thank mm -hmm. you steve steve just brought me some water
So you got that? Yep. Yep. Okay. Now, a little bit below that, we're going to do the second range of mountains, which are closer up. So they can have a little bit more detail and don't be too exact. Nobody's going to say, oh, it doesn't look like that because this is your made up landscape. So there's nothing to compare it to. So don't stress about how exact it is. But I would say, do not follow the same line. Avoid following, you want to vary it. So like where this one comes up, maybe this one comes down. And then just kind of do the same thing, drag it across and maybe a few more cragglies. There we go. There's my second line. Done? Okay. Now for this one, we're gonna do the ground and it should be fairly straight. We don't want it kind of at a slant. And I have found that trying to draw a straight line can be difficult. So I, I like to draw a straight line from top to bottom. It's easier than across and it's easier than going up. It's just somehow easier. And you can use the edge of the paper or the board to help um, stabilize your hand. So just a real quick about not too close to the bottom, about midway between the, the mountain range and the bottom and just come down with a line. In the bottom or the top? I start at the top of, well, it's gonna be below your mountains. So I'll show you if you can't see it real clearly here. Can you see that? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's all the drawing we're going to do on this one. And so now we pick up our pen brush. We get it nice and wet. Nice and wet. And we're only going to paint in water right now. No color, no paint. And what we're going to do is we are going to wet from the top down to the edge of the first line of mountain, or well, the top line of mountains. So you wanna get it as wet as you can and watch out for any little fuzzies that might come up or hairs. You don't want any of those because they're gonna absorb the paint um, and it'll, it'll create it. So just come like carefully come down across your mountain range the top mountain range, and then just fill it all in all the way up to the top. And if you have any little fuzzies or hairs, it's actually easier to remove them with the brush rather than your finger. Some people, when they paint in watercolors, they uh, prep their paper by wetting it and then taping it down to a surface. The paper, even though it's watercolor paper, it is going to buckle some with the moisture. But mm. don't worry about that because you can always place it under some books to reflatten it in the future. Um, and it will, the buckling will subside after a while. So in this wetting part, would it help to have a wider, flatter brush to do the wetting and then work with the thinner brush when you're doing the painting? I'm, I'm well, if you want to, yes, uh, to cover more ground quickly. Yeah. Also, also bigger brushes are gonna tend to hold more water in them. Uh -huh. I'm gonna do this whole painting using just this one brush. Okay. I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep it simple. So when you kind of can see the sheen of where the water is, you might sometimes have to put your head down, get closer in yeah. and, and look, for any, uh, look for any areas that you've missed. And a lot, some other 
techniques with watercolor is they'll reserve an area of dry where the paint will not run because we're going to drop some paint into this and we're going to let the paint run around and do its thing. Okay, so is everybody wet right there? All wet. All wet right there? Oh, yeah. Okay, so now we're going to pick a blue, or no, actually, we're going to start with a yellow. It's wet. So I'm going to use this, this particular yellow. Choose a yellow that's in your paint palette and get get lots of nice color in there get a nice little puddle in your thing in your paint and then i'm going to start dropping in some yellow along the ridge of the the mountain and just dropping it in and you'll see how the paint just kind of starts feathering out and running You don't even have to go all the way across. You could just do, we're gonna, we're gonna improvise on this one. You don't have to go all the way across or you can, um, cause we're gonna do some orange and then we're gonna get some blue. So that's all the yellow I'm gonna put in. I'm gonna clean my brush of the yellow and I'm gonna kinda clean my brush. And now I'm gonna go for some orange get some good color on my brush and I'm gonna do because I kind of like to see it vary in colors I like a nice colorful painting and just come right up to the the line of the mountains and drop in some color and you can come into the yellow a little with it using the very tip of my brush and very lightly, I'm just kind of brushing over to give the illusion of some clouds over here. Can you see that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Now, cleaning my brush really good, making sure there's no more orange or yellow in it. And my, my paper's still nice and wet. I'm gonna choose a nice uh, blue. I think I'm gonna go with this this blue that's kind of it's like an aquamarine blue it's like a purpley blue i would say you get lots and lots of color on there and i'm going to start at the very top and start putting in dropping in some blue nice and liquidy and nice and dark Let's see how you guys are doing. Still working on my orange. <laughs> okay. And you can you can you can see how you can kind of push the paint around, the pigment around on the paper, and it just starts running. I am. Let's see. Let me see you guys' this paintings. I might be too bright in here. Oh. You don't you don't want it to be too consistent. You want it to have variations. Okay. And and you still come in with a little bit of the not adding any more blue, but just coming in with the brush that you got and just doing little um, horizontal touches on the um, on the paint that's there. You you want irregularities because this is and I have some, some clouds and such. I'm gonna clean my brush. Let's see how you guys are doing. And if you if you did pick up your your painting and show it to me, it, it's too wet right now to um, for me for the paint not to, to drip. Ah careful, they're cool. Get more water on your brush. Okay. Yeah. And actually, 
just take water and with the color that you have on your paper right now, push it around with a wet brush. You don't even have to add more color right now. Just push around what you got with a wet brush. And it seems that? like the paper has a texture to it. Yes, it does. Yeah. If you, if you wanted to do something without the, the texture, a hot pressed watercolor paper has less texture. Cold press tends to have more. But that's something you decide ahead of time, right? Yes. Yeah. But this will oh, look I like look that fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, this is it's a good thing. A lot of people really like the uh, the texture. They like to see that it's a watercolor. We're not painting a photograph. We're right. not paint, you know, and this is not a um, uh, architectural drawing painting. Even if an architect does it. <laughs> Even if an arch not this this one. If you, were, if you were doing an architectural painting, you would probably be using gouache and uh, bris, bristle? Bris, bristol paper, which is really smooth. Yeah. Alex, I seem to be getting, um, you know, paint uh, brush strokes in mine. Yeah, and... that's fine. Okay. That's fine. If, you're, if, you're, if your paper is wet, to begin with and you're just basically what we're doing is we're dropping in pigment and and then I took my my paintbrush and just did some vertical uh, wipes without any paint on it and like I can see as it's starting to dry I can see some of the areas where where it's doing what it's like feathering out from one color to another and I can soften that effect with my brush by just going over it with a clean, clean brush and just pushing the paint around. So kind of blending it with the, the water. Yeah, exactly. Using the using a clean brush to, to push the pigment around. Hmm. Okay, so Trump is acquitted. Oh. <clears throat> yeah. Sorry, we're gonna we're gonna keep painting. <laughs> Life goes on. Yeah. Yes, it does. Okay, so do you have that whole area covered? Pretty much. With, yeah. with paint. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop in some darker blue in the top because one of the things that watercolor does is it, it comes, when you first put it on the paper, it seems a lot darker. And then mm -hmm. as it soaks into the paper, it becomes lighter and lighter. So if you want, and because this is kind of a sunset, we kind of want the, the sky to be a little on the darker side. So the blue, we're gonna go back in with some more blue just across the top to kind of deepen that blue, okay? Here's in the same color. The same blue that you used before and just come across the top and add more. See how that's, cause that's like <clears throat> oh, yeah. light, yeah. And then just, it's basically do like one pass with the blue and then just use your brush to come down with horizontal stripes and you can come down into the lighter part a little bit, but you don't want dark blue uh, lines coming too far down. So just using your brush going vertical, very light. If you rub the paper too hard, it starts getting pilly, kind of like cotton, non-cotton sheets. Yeah. And so you want a real light, light touch. And you basically want to work the area where it's transitioning from blue to the light, light yellow.
And if you want more pigment on your brush, just go back up to where you just put it down where it's still wet. And you can even come back up from the orange and come up, I got a little fuzzy thing, there we go. Okay, I'm going to now show you with my paper towel. I'm gonna scrunch it up. You guys ready for this next step? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Take your paper towel and just kind of scrunch it up into a little wrinkle thingy thing like that. Okay, and now decide where you want your clouds to be. And you don't want them to be too uniform in size, but find a place, like maybe take a look at where the, the variations are on your painting so far, and kind of use that to help you dictate where the clouds are gonna be, and just blot. Okay. And it's gonna lift up the paint. Did you wet it or no? No. You can if you want uh, very, very slightly though. So I'm going to just do a, a bunch of clouds and I'm going to come down. I'm not even going to use a clean part to do the bottom ones that go over the yellow. My paint's not coming off. There we go. So I have a few little clouds. You see that? How that works? Easy clouds. Easy clouds. My paint's not coming off. It's not? Is your paint, your um, paint must be dry. dry. Yeah, too dry. Yeah, you got too dry. So you have two choices. You can either yeah. take, take your paintbrush with just water, just clean, uh -huh. and you can paint into an area. Yeah, mine's too okay. dry. So wet it and then dab it? Yeah, you can lift it with uh, the paintbrush and water on your paintbrush. Mm -hmm. you can, if you wet the whole thing too much, I'm afraid it might get too over overworked. And I'll bring this closer to the camera so you can see. Oh, sure, show off. Cool. Uh, look at that. So you see, I've done just a few little, with whatever's on my brush, if it had a little bit of blue that I picked up from doing it up here, brought it down into the yellow and the orange a little bit, just a few vertical strokes. Uh huh. And then you can always go back in and blot. Don't blot too much. It's like a, you don't want to use that technique too much. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna do experimental, which is so much of what this is about, but I'm gonna take a nice tight little part of my paper towel and I'm gonna touch it on this light part, push and twist, because I think that's where the sun should be. It's going down and see if I can remove some of the yellow. Oh. No, too much. I screwed it up. I'm pulling the paper fibers. All right, that was a bad idea. <laughs> I'm gonna try it, see if I can get that with a clean, clean brush and just some water and lift it. Oh, 
Okay, softening it up with some, just wetting it and lifting the color. So one little white light area. It's not as, I don't, I didn't like draw out a circle and then avoid painting it because I wanted us to just be able to paint freely without avoiding any areas. But I guess I could have done that. That's another option is to not wet the area and then the paint wouldn't uh, run into it. Yeah. We'll do that on the next one. So right now I'm just trying to, uh, I'm trying to lift up my color in that one spot that's gonna be my sun. See? I have paper boogers all over my <laughs> paper boogers. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, because I wet it too much. Well, actually, it's just from, from working the brush repetitively and <coughs> rubbing, rubbing it. If you do a really light touch, and don't worry, this is not the only painting we're going to do. Um, if you use a really light touch, then you're less apt to have the paint fibers start rolling around. Well, it was the paper towel. Oh. That's right. Okay, so let's see. Are you guys done with your sky pretty much? I don't know, you tell me. How that? That looks good. The orange looks, yeah, that looks pretty good. I would say you don't want to overwork it, but I would say take, <clears throat> take a, a clean, just water on your brush and soften the orange line, the top part of the orange line. Try and push around a little bit of that pigment, the orange pigment uh -huh. that you have over here so that it's, it's softened. So it's not so much of a line. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Okay. Let's see yours, Muriel. Can you, is it, is it dry enough to lift it? No, I've, it's taped to the. Oh, table. it's taped to the, to the table? Yeah. Ah. You see it? Oh, there we go. Yeah, that's nice. That's, that's good. That's, that's good. Yep. I do see it. J Jerry's uh, moving the <laughs> computer. Good, good, good. Thanks, Jerry. A friend, let's. Is there a way to see yours? Um, let me see if I, I think it's too wet, but let me see if I can. Yeah, we don't want to wreck it. That's what I need. You need cardboard, you put, should put yours on too, so. I don't, yeah, I think it's too wet. Yeah, I'm, okay, I'm too all right. So what, what you can do now Definitely. is get out your handy hair dryer. Yeah. And we're just gonna make sure, we're just gonna make sure that this this line here, the, the, the first one that we put the yellow and the orange is dry enough that when we start painting in the mountains, it doesn't run into that. So it's gotta be nice and dry. So we're gonna focus, we're gonna focus on- The lower edge. The lower part of the sky and make sure that it's uh, dry. Hey, Alex. <laughs> hey, Jerry. Good. 
Hey, Muriel. Yeah. You got to you got to let it dry. I know. She's, I just wanted a little more orange in there. She's still mucking around with the sun. All right. Okay. Mucking with the sun. You are cute, you little uh, craft oriented hairdryer. Oh, that's cool. Kind of cool. Yeah. It's a heat gun. It's a heat gun. It's not a oh, so is, is your is yours dry enough right there? I think that's good, Fran. That should be good. The part you just put on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we're ready to do the mountain range. So um, I'm going to do purple. You can do whatever color you want. It's your painting. Purple but Mountain of Majesty. Exactly. Mm. But usually. On this, on this patriotic day where our president got acquitted. Yeah. Yeah. He's still impeached in my mind twice. There you go. Me too. Exactly. Well, at least he's not our president. Sorry for That's making right. political right. statements. No, um, he was impeached twice. But anyway, go ahead. Sorry. So we're going to do, um, actually, we're going to do more of a bluish purple, not a, not, I don't know what purples you guys have, but um, as you, as you um, go back in space, you're going to see things more blue. Um, so because of the atmosphere, so I'm going to mix um my blue that i used for the sky with a little bit of purple that i have in my palette um so i'm going to mix a color to get a, a more of a bluish purple so i'm going to use sometimes like i just i get real i just put it in here just some place where i can make a little puddle and like I said before, you don't worry if um, if you mix up, you get like some blue in your purple and the, the cake, because you can always, at the end of your painting session, you could take a, a damp paper towel and wipe it. But see, the purple that I have is more of a reddish purple, so I want it to be more of a bluish purple. That's always been a difficulty for me is the mixing of the paint. Is it difficult? We'll just figure out if I add more yellow, is it going to be green? If I add this, you know, what color am I going to? Yeah, well, you know, another thing sometimes you can do if your tape on the side it, or if you have another extra piece of paper is you can put it down just a little test swab yeah. to see how you feel about it. Of course, doing it on blue tape, you can't really get the, but you can do it on your, you can do it on your paper towel. Yeah. To get a, a test. So this is still, I think I want mine to be a little bit more blue. You want to be or practice on just regular paper? No. So I'm going to add more you up when you need them. More <laughs> blue. So I want more of a blue with a little purple in it is what I want. You guys have your color ready? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, then clean your brush somewhat. Because we're going to do the same thing. We're going to paint with water first. Now oh. we have our color. So, and it's okay if there's just a little bit of the purple on your brush still, but I want you to paint your, uh, paint with water. We're just going to come down to the second range of mountains and just do that, oh, yeah. that one section. It's like uh, coloring book stuff. Mm -hmm. Quite enough. Uh, the foreground mountain peaks. She's doing the no. Okay. She's doing the background mountain peaks. I thought she was a midground. Uh, What's that, there? Is it? Are you doing the the midground uh, mountain peaks or the foreground mountain peaks? I'm doing the the background mountain. Back peaks. Back. Cool. Farthest the farthest ones away. Right. So it's basically the. The second, 
shape there, the second. Uh, stripe. So just wet it all in. Louie, Louie. Oh, you can hear it. Cool. I heard that. I, I cannot paint without music. I'm sorry, but I just can't. That's great. It just has to be there. All right, so I'm looking at the side, just to make sure I get all the little gaps, although it doesn't really matter because when I start pushing the paint around. So, all right, so I got that all wet and I got my purple, my blue purple mixed. And now I'm gonna just start dropping in some color and let it, and I'm gonna start at the top of my mountain range and to get that effect of kind of like a haze or a fog between the mountain ranges, I'm gonna go, go darker to light. So I'm gonna start at the top. And just let it, it'll run all the way to the edge. Mm. more pigments. And all the little irregularities are actually gonna benefit you in the long run. All the little light and dark variations. So come back in and just start moving that around. Don't, don't, um, don't go all the way to the bottom. Oh, that's a great color. Louie, Louie, oh, baby. <laughs> and then I'm gonna, because I want more variation, I'm gonna just take some more pigment on my brush and with the very tip of my brush, the very, very tip, just touch. And these, all these little dots will spread out onto the paper wherever it's wet. And whenever you're doing, whenever you're doing Mother Nature stuff, um, try not to be too regular. Try to keep things as irregular as you can. Um, in other words, you don't want things to be too consistent. You want them to be inconsistent random. Beautiful. I think Muriel, are you still doing your orange in your sky? I hear her. Woo. Here you go. 
beard all the way here. Sounds. Sounds would be on your little sidebar, wouldn't it? Right here. Boom. There you go. Boom. There we go. No. Still not back. There we go. Nope. In here. Oh, there. You're doing the lines. Cool. All right. So, sorry, for me. I keep, I'm looking through my bifocals at my screen of what you guys are doing. Maybe I should switch glasses. Switch glasses. Oh, cool. Wish I could zoom in now. On Muriel's? Yeah. Okay, sit back a little bit more. There we go. Nice. Cool. Let's see yours, Fran. Cool. Cool. Jeff, can you pick yours up? Uh, right side's a little wet. <clears throat> yep, got it. Perfect, perfect. You guys are coming along. Looking good. Funny, Muriel, your mountains look pink from here. It, it, they are kind of a, a mauve color. Ah, okay, cool. Very nice. So get that filled in. You got to get that that layer dry, so we can go on to the next. Are we filling in that whole area with color? Yep. Well, um, on the mountain range. You want to leave the bottom part fairly light to, to give the appearance okay. of um, like a fog or a mist between the layers. Wow. We actually, we went to Yosemite a couple weekends ago, saw the most incredible, I didn't even think it really existed like that in nature that you could, that people's photos were like touched up or something that I had seen yeah. previously, but layers and layers of hills with fog between them. It was so amazing and so inspiring. It just looked, yeah. looked amazing. And you guys went just before the winds came and knocked over all those trees. The day before. Yeah. Actually, it happened that night. Yeah. We were driving out we had to be out by five. And so we were driving out at like five o'clock and um, Steve made comment about a lot of the trees that had been damaged from the fires or the beetles or whatever. And there was a lot of down trees and he said, well, all they need is a big wind and a lot of these other trees are gonna come down. And it happened that night. Yeah. Right? Crazy. And we have a girlfriend that lives there in Win Winona and she showed us pictures on her phone um, that she took of where she lives and, and some of the, the trees, what they did. Anyway, back to our painting. Are you ready to go to the next? Yeah, dry that good. So I'm thinking the next, the next range of mountains. I'm thinking the next range of mountains can be more of a, um, I'm thinking the other one, this one that I did, I did brown. Okay. And we're doing like this range of mountains here, but 
I think we could do like more of a grayish color. That's what I'm thinking. So I'm gonna I'm gonna mix some other colors. No, I want to see her. I'm gonna mix another color of like a gray brown. So this is like a dark gray that I have in my palette, and I'm gonna just add some brown to it. Now, are your foreground mountains darker than the background mountains? Yes. Gets to go? Yeah. So I'm doing, I'm going to, this is going to be a really dark color. This is a brown with a gray. And for this one, kind of so you can experience what we were doing before was called wet in wet where you have a wet paper and you're dropping in wet paint. So we're just going to we're just going to fill our brushes pretty pretty the brush is pretty wet with a lot of pigment on it and we're just going to paint that layer and just come in and paint brown. on the dry brown. paper. So she's really dark brown. Brown and what? I mix brown and gray. You can mix, if you don't have a gray in your thing, you could put just a little bit of black in it. Oh, that's gray. This is a lot darker than I thought it was going to be. So we're just doing the, uh, the range of mountains that are here in the front. And you kind of don't want the line, if you come up to the line first, like I did, you don't really want to have a line per se showing because if the paint dries, because we're painting right now, we're painting uh, paint on top of dry paper. So whatever brush strokes you have, they're going to be more, yeah. more evident as it dries. It's going to dry into the paper sooner than if it was wet paper. So make sure that you come back with like a wet brush and soften that and some more pigment to so that you don't have a line that follows the, the form of the uh, the mountains and try and make it rough. Try and make it as rough as possible and organic looking. You don't want, um, we're not trying to make it look like a, a graphic poster kind of a thing. You can go, you can add more dark in some areas. Be a regular scribble around in there Use the tip of your brush and just kind of scribble because you want it to look rather textured and like there's things going on. There's rocks and trees and silhouettes and so come back in with some darker and then just use some water on your brush and, and it'll, it'll uh, settle out. The paint will spread out. So are you going all the way down to that line at the bottom in this process? All the way down to the line that indicates the ground? Yeah. Yeah. The one that you drew with the pencil? Yes. So now I'm going to, I think I'm going to go 
into just my my dark gray. I'm not going to do black, but I'm just going to drop in some. I'm just going to drop in a few. Let me come bring closer. Watch this if you can. Watch. But I'm just going to drop in random little. These are going to be. These could be trees. These could be. Rocks, this could be anything, but uh, to add some texture and kind of look at the way that the paint is already kind of settled in here, the lights and darks, and use that as a guide kind of to keep it really organic and not too many. So that, that's good enough for me. And if you wanted to lighten up some areas, then you just clean your brush a pigment, kind of have it moist and you can drop in just little things of water on your mountains too. Yeah, if you drop some water in there, it's going to do some really fun things. But you don't want too much water. Eleanor Rigby? What's that? Eleanor Rigby? Yeah. And I'm taking this dark color and I'm just kind of kind of dot along the bottom line of this. Because if there's any trees or shrubbery or whatever, that's where I would see them. So. And I don't want to go all the way across with it. I want to just kind of randomly See what I did? Yeah. So just kind of dabbed some dark color along the bottom line there. And I just, I just kind of, but the paper's kind of wet because I had dropped some water in there. Wow, your colors, Muriel, look like something Georgia O'Keeffe would do. <laughs> Mine look like Marty Feldman. I can't have <laughs> Marty Feldman. <laughs> With the wonky eyes. Well, it's great, honey. Igor. Igor. It's not Igor, it's Igor. Igor. <laughs> So I got to figure out a way when I do this that I can focus on everybody's paintings and see that more. Yeah, and you know, I could switch over to my iPad and then I could show you, it would be easier to move because the way my computer is now. So 
when you reckon when you set one up, it might be recommended to have people if they have a device, it will be easier because if I hold up my painting and it's wet, it all goes right. But I can lift up the iPad. Yeah, that might be the best to I if might switch have... over when we do another painting and then I can show you that way because yeah. I think it's hard to lift up, but just thoughts. Yeah. Because right now, I'd rather see you guys as paintings than to see you sitting there working on your paintings. Although it's great to see you, but I mean, I could potentially go. also set up my computer. Yeah, not everybody can though. I'm trying to sort out a way. Yeah. To to have these painting sessions where people can all do it simultaneously. Mm -hmm. So not everybody. I mean, even. You know, some people went out and, like, Fran, you went out and bought the watercolors, right? Yeah. Yeah. But I was, ha I'm happy to do it. I love what, I was so excited when you posted you were going to do this. I'm like, I love watercolors. I haven't done it in ages. So I'm inspired. Cool. Beyond this, I, I might do some things, so. Good. I, I hope, yeah. and that's what I hope to accomplish is to uh, get people just used to using the medium so that they can then play with it on their own and, and stuff. Sometimes it just comes, it's too intimidating. And everybody hears watercolors are so difficult, but they're not really. The only thing is that once you put it down and it dries, then it's there. Whereas with like acrylic or oils or something, you could paint over an area and fix your mistakes. Right. And again, you're painting on paper. You can always throw it away if you're really unhappy with it. <laughs> that is the, uh, right. Paint on the other side. Yeah. Oh, that looks great, Jeff. Isn't that awesome? That yeah. does look awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the great thing about watercolors, it's really, I mean, I think I got the stuff for 20, you know, under 30 bucks. Right. So, yeah. It's not like you have to buy canvas and you know all the things that cost and the paints for acrylic and and we have like another hour to go and i wanted to do one more painting after this so we're gonna have to zip through the last part of this which is we don't have a lot more to go but i want to do one that's really experimental that i haven't even tried myself that's just kind of fun to to, to finish this session off with so let's if if you're um if you need to use your hair dryer to make sure that edge oh that's cool that, look, up. that looks great that looks really good. nice and textured on that bottom nice on yeah that bottom range it, of that it bled in a few spots where i had too much water i think i have too much water sometimes so i gotta watch my on my brush yeah. and it's a matter of of the more you do it, the more experience, and then you, you learn, you learn when, when you need to blot your, the excess off, when you don't. Um, all right, so if, you're, if your surface, if your last, this bit here is dry enough, where there's no sheen to it, that's all we're looking for, where it's not shiny, um, then again, we're gonna do on the dry paper, mm -hmm. and I suggest uh, some sort of an orange, orangey brown for the ground to maybe represent like grassy area. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to do, I'm going to probably mix an orange. Actually, I'm just going to do orange. I'm just gonna do straight up orange and then I'm gonna drop in some browns on top of that. So I'm just gonna paint orange onto the dry paper. And I know this seems super bright and unrealistically orange, but we're gonna we're going to muddy it up dark and give it a more natural look with some other colors. So that's good enough. Just a quick, 
just coming across and it, it's not even it's not even completely filled in so then i'm going to take there's still some orange on my brush and i'm going to go for this it's kind of a a muddy greenish brown that i happen to have i don't know what like i said i don't know what colors you have in your palette but i'm going to just kind of drop in randomly into the orange and some of the white areas and let the paint kind of do its thing did you wet that first alex or no this is on dry paper okay what color did you use the second time it was this it's kind of a, a lighter brown okay is <clears throat> well so I'm going to leave mine like that the ground while you guys are doing your are you done with your ground just about So this definitely needs to be dry before the last step. And you can leave little bits of, of unpainted paper, some white in there. That's always cool. If, you're, if your brush gets dry, it's not too wet. You can just kind of skim over it and it leaves some of the texture of the paper. Like, uh, see how that, Awesome. So just real loose and random. Have fun with that part. But we have to make sure that that part, we have to make sure now that it's all dry before we go on to the next step. So I'm gonna run to the ladies room real quick and you can pull out your hair dryers. Steve. Hey, what's up? Hey, Steve. You guys are having fun, it looks like. Well, we're in painting class with Miss Alex. It looks like a good one. Are you going to put a tree in there? Yes. Oh, nice. It looks really fun. Everybody's looks great. That's hard to see. Everybody's I'm watching Pebble Beach on TV. Who's leading right now in Pebble Beach? Mike. That looks great, Jeff. Yeah. Let me see Muriel. Ah. Cool. Ah. <laughs> there we go. Cool. Ah. Okay, is so everybody's dry? Pretty much. Pretty much.
Let me see the brushes you guys are all using. If you got a small enough. Number eight. Number eight. Oh, you're using the same size as me. Cool. Yeah. Does the number have any significance other than a higher number is a wider brush? Yeah, the, the numbers uh, indicate the size of the brush. Like a, a one would be a really small brush. But is a one like a one millimeter or anything, or is it just relative? I think it's just relative, but you have different types of brushes. Like this is a round, it's considered a round. Right. Kind of rough. You can get a flat, you can get a filbert, a fan, different ones. Right. They all, they all um, have numbers, they all have sizes. So you could get right. number six round is probably the most typical paintbrush used. Okay. Um, and watercolor brushes are different than acrylics? Yeah, if, if you're a real serious watercolor painter, you'll get sable. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Um, and the purpose for that is because it's going to hold more water in it and more pigment. Mm -hmm. um, and then because acrylic paints and then oil paints and uh, the solvents <laughs> are harsher on, on your brushes, so um, the, the real fine haired brushes don't tolerate the chemicals as well. They won't last as long. So for durability, you, for an acrylic or oil painting, you want um, more or less, you want to try synthetic brushes rather mm -hmm. than natural hairs. But they make really good synthetic that replicate natural brushes now too. Mm. Back in the day, artists used to make their own pigments and make their own brushes. Cut their hair and wind it up and make a brush out of it. <laughs> yeah, or go out to the stable and get some hairs from the horse. Uh -huh. Yeah. So are we ready to start? Where did Muriel go? She went off. Uh-oh. I think Steve mentioned the PGA tournament. Maybe she's watching a golf tournament. <laughs> they are. Huh. Come back. Okay. All right. So we're gonna move forward, and we're gonna um, we're gonna do some sort of a uh, something to break the horizon line, something to fix the the uh, composition in this one, because right now it's just a series of stripes. So we want to make it more interesting. So we're gonna be doing something growing, a tree, mm -hmm. uh, or it could be a cactus. Um, if you have something in mind that you wanna do, uh, feel free to do that. Um, but I'm gonna just do, let me see, I think I had seen a silhouette of a cactus that I really like, but I think I'll just stick with the tree. So an oak tree. No, that's too much, too detailed. We want to keep this simple because we want to do another painting and we want to do this other thing. So I'm going to wet my brush and I'm going to go not absolutely black, but I'm going to go back to this dark gray that I had. Do, it, do you guys have a dark gray on your palette? Yeah. I do, yeah. You do? I would suggest using that. Oh my gosh, I'm brown now. Huh? My gray looks brown. I have to fix it. All right, and I'm gonna come straight up from off the the painting surface, so it looks like it's really up close. And I'm gonna pick a nice area. I think I'm gonna go over here because this looks rather boring here. Um, and I'm just gonna with a very light touch and holding my brush more at the end rather than up close and making sure I got lots of pigment and it's nice and wet so that like if I were to tap this, it would splatter. That's how wet it should be, uh, but you don't wanna do that. Anyway, so I'm just gonna drag the tip of the brush from the bottom and come up and adding a little wiggles and I want it to go from thick to thin 
and come back up. And now I'm gonna do some branches coming out of it. And you wanna watch for tangents. You don't wanna follow a line that's already in existence. So I'm gonna come up. There's Muriel, she's back. Yeah, my computer died, I had to plug it in. Ah, I thought you were mad at me. <laughs> really? No. So you following us okay? You got the, um, the tree and just, just kind of basically letting the, the brush lightly, the very, very tip of it. Wow. Don't spend too long with it. The more you fuss with it, the more opportunities for mistakes. Yep. <laughs> Leave it alone. <laughs> don't pick at it. <laughs> don't pick at it, exactly. So we don't have a whole lot of time left, so we have to wrap this one up. Maybe you guys could set that one aside because I really want to do this other really fun thing. Okay. Everybody game? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So set this one aside, let it dry, and you can always go back in and paint your tree or whatever. And go to your next piece. Okay. And on this one, I am still going to do the tape. So we want to tape, tape off the edges like the last one. Looks better from far away. <clears throat> <laughs> Remember to burnish your inside edges. And this one we're going to do, it's called portrait orientation. Ah, I want you to real quick go dump your water and get fresh clean water. Okay. First. Now with yeah. clean water, we get your water. Water. <clears throat> Can we wash your brush? No, yeah, wash your brush. We're starting fresh. Hey, you forgot the part about where you sign the painting. 
you, well, because I had you guys stop short and set it aside, you can always sign it later. Do you all have uh, pens handy, ink pens? What? Uh, no. No? Specifically kind of ink pen. I have an ink pen, but. Okay, go get an ink pen and have it what handy. Pen, what kind of pen? It doesn't really matter, just some sort of an ink pen. It could be ballpoint. It could be one of those. Um, like a Sharpie, like a thin. Thin, color. as long as it's thin, yeah. Sharpie. Does it matter what color? Um, no, doesn't matter what color either. Just, a, got, just a regular pen. Just a regular pen. I've got, um, this is an S gel Sharpie, and I believe it's blue. It's blue, it's really dark blue. It doesn't really matter. It could be a ballpoint pen. Okay. As long as it's an ink pen and not a felt pen. Marker type. Ready? Okay. What do you got up your sleeve there, Alex? What that? What do you got up your sleeve there, Alex? Something fun. <laughs> I can see your big grin. She's got a uh, mischievous look. Yeah. Okay, so we got a clean. We got clean water, clean brush, clean piece of paper. Everybody's got a pen handy. You got all the colors that you could want. All right. What I want you to do is wet your whole paper, but it's okay. If there's any little white areas, that's okay. Any little uh, dry areas, just pretty much take your brush and just get random. Did you burnish? Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. Did you? Oh, what did I'm you doing do? it. I'm doing it. I my water. <laughs> All right. So we, All want, right. we want more water than we want uh, dry areas. But I'm, all I'm saying is um, don't worry if you miss some spots. I just want you to quickly like bam, 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 get some water down on your paper. See if you can see the... Well, I could use a squirt bottle for that. Well, then that would get it all... No, <laughs> better to do a brush. And then you have, there's some little gaps on mine. Can you see the sheen? Yeah. Okay. And I didn't get it down here. It's mostly dry down here and just scribble around with your with your paintbrush with water on it just basically but, but the whole page the, the whole page yeah okay got plenty okay. Of huh? all right now all right. pick a color like a something nice and bright like a red maybe your choice and just put that on your brush nice and drippy wet same number eight brush your number eight brush, yes. All right, and now just touch in a few places randomly where there's water or where there's not. I'd say we don't like even numbers, so I've got six right here, I'm gonna go seven. There we go, okay? See what that's done? You see how it's just kind of running not over around? here. Huh? Not coming out the same way for doesn't me. Doesn't spread as much as yours on our paper. Yeah. Yeah, neither me. You didn't get enough water on there. Uh, it's it's water down on pretty there. good. It's, it's all curving and okay. let me try one area here. Mine looks like a page of boobs. Yeah, mine doesn't. It looks more like chicken pox. Okay, get another color. You can rinse that red out or you can combine it with another color. Uh -huh. um, I would say I'm going to go pink. I have a pink on my palette. Something in that, that color range of the red. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to just drop in. Maybe your brush isn't wet enough. It's super wet. wet. Yeah. Like that. More wet. Maybe you just have magic paper. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I do. So now I'm going to get some more red. Okay, so after the red, what did you do? 
I just picked a, a pink and dropped the same thing, but it's it's almost a white. So I'm going back to the red and going to do some smaller. And watch this. See that? That's how wet my brush was. I just tapped it and it splattered a bunch of droplets of, of paint. Ah. That's how wet, that's a good example of how wet my paintbrush is, how much paint is on my brush. Okay, I'm gonna try vermilion. Nice, that would be good. Now I'm gonna try some yellow, but I still have a little bit of uh, red on my brush, so it's and then now I'm going to just touch in the areas where, so it's all right if I touch some of the red areas, but I'm going to do some, some yellow, little. Okay. And I think we're going to just go like that. And then I'm going to clean my brush with my little blotting thing. Now I'm going to go for some green. And it's okay if the green runs into the red or the yellow. It's okay. I'm going to go with a dark green. And with this, see if I can make this happen. If I go. Paint a little shape. Yeah. You're putting shapes in it, Alex? What's that? Shapes. Shapes. Is that what you said? You're going to put shapes in it or shades? Yeah, I was thinking shapes, shapes with a P. But no, the paper's too wet to, to really deal with that, to really be able to precisely do shapes. So, but instead of just dropping dots, I'm more brushing little things. So with the, with the green, kind of brushing. Mine's very psychedelic. <laughs> and mine is as well. Thing is, we don't want to mix too much and brush in the green and the red because then that's going to make a muddy color. You kind of want to keep them, I mean, it's okay if one bleeds into the other, but you don't want to brush the green on top of the red too much. Um, I'm going to try some orange in some spots where it's just white. I have a lot of white. That's all right. So do I, see? <clears throat> no, I have a lot of white. Because <laughs> it didn't. Brad, like, yeah, your paper might not have been very wet. Okay, that's enough of that. Now I'm going to take my hair dryer and I'm going to dry this. I think. I don't know, okay. See, it looks like a mess. Looks like a bouquet. Yeah. I think. In order to do with this what I kind of want to do, I'm going to add a little bit more red first before I dry it. In a what? I'm going to add a little more red back to, to some red. I want more color and I'm just going to do some random 
breast strokes. So now there's a lot more red in there, see? Yeah. Okay. So now I gotta dry it. Let me see what, how you guys are doing with yours. Let me see. Okay, you got dots. Yep. You got I, I saturated my. Look at the paper, it's all deformed and everything, but huh. in fact, I can still see sheen on it. Wow, and it's and it's just the color staying and staying put. Yeah. yeah. All not... right, well then do some random brush strokes instead of just dots. Connect some of those dots. Oh my God, is that Muriel's? Oh, that's gorgeous. Muriel's, that's awesome. Wow. That's what I intended. Well, I'm good at making a mess. <laughs> it's not a mess. Look at that too. Let me see, Fran. Uh, some of mine blotted, but maybe my paper wasn't wet enough in some spots. Some of it blotted and some of it. Yeah. That's running, but. Well, you can always add some water. Mm -hmm. Kind of pull the paint out from the. Um, yeah, and, and Jeff and Sue, if you want to just get a wet brush and push the, the pigment around. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Uh -huh. pushing yeah. it around. Here it up. Muriel, Muriel, yes. let, let, let the, the paper and the pigments kind of dry okay. um, before you push anything else around. And because and, what we want is basically we want um, happy accidents to happen. Okay. And they can only happen when the, the paint kind of starts spreading on its own if you push it around too much. Okay. Yeah. Now that looks a little less dotty, Jeff. Let me see. Oh man, I gotta I gotta get on the plane and take this to the roof. <laughs> take it to the where? The roof. <laughs> Mine does not look like a bulky of flowers though. Let me see. Well that's cool. 
That's cool though. Because it doesn't have to, my intention is not necessarily that it's just gonna be flowers. This is gonna be what, this is an abstract watercolor painting. And basically, ah. basically what I want this to be is where you just randomly put down some, some pigment on wet paper and let the pigment dictate to you what the shapes are. And we're gonna define those shapes. We're gonna read our own paintings and let the painting tell us where the lines are gonna be. So we're gonna like define the shapes that we see, what has settled out as the paint has spread and, and all that. Mine kind of looks like a bouquet of flowers. Yeah. Um, it doesn't have to be representational of anything. This is an abstract. This doesn't have to be based in reality. So I'm going to just start noodling with my pen. And if your painting is dry enough, if the paint is dry enough, then you can start drawing on it on yours as well. And just find the shapes. Don't have to outlet. You can draw in the shapes, out of the shapes. You can outline shapes. This is basically like conscious streaming, letting your painting talk to you instead of you trying to control the painting. This is the fun part. This is okay. what I, I like to just, it's playing with your materials. We already did one that's representational. Now we're gonna do one that's just playful. doodling Do we see little faces or characters in there little bunny rabbits jumping around if you see in there Huh? Can I put Waldo in there? You could if you. Like, where's Waldo? If you wanted to, you could. And this is your fun. This is what your mother would put on the refrigerator for you. find in there, honey? Should you be thinking at all about shadow lines or anything like that or just put your lines anywhere? Anywhere you want them. This is, like I said, this is abstract. I'm, I'm just going in and out of shapes, using the shapes as kind of a, dic a dictation of, like initially this looked like it would be a cool flower bouquet, but I'm, I'm kind of avoiding that and fighting that. I'm gonna just do something more random. I don't really want mine to be representational of anything. I just want an image, nothing in particular. trying to avoid actually having it look like anything in particular. That's kind of a challenge. Yeah. Got some kind of prehistoric. 
dinosaur, dinosaur man beast in here. Yeah. <laughs> and the lizard. It's just a show. <clears throat> I'm feeling my inner dolly. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever feels right to you to do. And the thing is, is that nobody besides us ever has to see this. So don't be intimidated. Don't think that you have to create a masterpiece, but you just might end up liking what you've done. Get in the zone. And if you don't like what you've done, fine. That's fine too. It's just a shower. Well, I appreciate it, Alex, because for me, it's just like when I did that class with you, however long ago that was, with the oil painting, just, just doing it takes the the fear and intimidation out of it. It's like, no, I'm not going to expect my work to be, you know, that of a famous artist because um, I've never done it before, but it's just fun. Yeah. It's very meditative. It's very relaxing. Yeah. Now I can give this to one of my kids and say, hang mommy's picture on your refrigerator. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think that's fair. Yeah. Oh, I wanted to call August and have him do this too. He's been playing with watercolors a lot. Oh, good. Yeah. Is he still working up in um, Paradise? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, he, uh, he came down for the holidays and was extremely instrumental in, uh, he's the one that initiated the project. Um, right. Of the, the roof. The roof on the shed, yeah. And they awesome. Fantastic. Steve was like so impressed. He's like, the kid came down with a van full of tools and he knows how to use all of them. Dang. <laughs> That's awesome. I know. And they worked together really well, too, which was nice. Good. You signed it to look at Sorry. you. That's awesome, babe. Let me see. It wasn't fully dry when I so the ink, the ink pen started to run a little bit, but 
can't see it really. It's dark when you hold it up, but. Uh -oh. you, know, you got a stem. Oh. Got a runner. <laughs> That's all right. That looks great. Now, I wish I could see it better. All the. If I hold it back in the light. I wish I could do, because see, can you make yourself a bigger pick? Let me see. Uh, let's see. Can, I, can you? Go. Here, can you? See if that helps. No, that didn't help. No, because I think you're, you're sharing your screen on the yeah, other one. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Show active speaker video. So let me see. I think it's the matter of the light. Let me try turning on a light in the dining area. Yeah, I want to see. Wow, Muriel's looks so feminine. Nice. Yeah, nice curvy lines. Yeah. That's that nice. helps it all with that. Yeah, that does help. That looks cool. Very cool. How fun. Sue, let me see yours. Nice. Look at that. Thank you. Nice. Reminds me of the garden. Yeah. Very, very gardeny. Fran. Cool. Wow. You got you got your paper was wet enough. You got a lot of bleeding from one to another, oh, yeah. which is great. You're muted. Very cool. Ah, there we go. Beautiful. And then here's mine. Oh, nice. Perfect. Beautiful. I love it. Mm, lovely. Very nice. Thanks. So fun stuff, you know, I just, I just thought, um, Sometimes with painting, with any kind of art form, it's a fine line between angst and zen. And, and you kind of, at least me in the process, I fluctuate. Um, mm -hmm. So when I, it's like, oh, I'm gonna screw this up or it's not gonna come out the way I mean it to come out. Or I did that, I jerked and got something where it shouldn't be. And then it's nice to just freestyle and do something like this that nobody can tell you it's wrong. Right. It's, it's not supposed to be a mountain. It's not supposed to be a tree. Mm -hmm. Not supposed to be somebody's face. It's just colors and lines that were fun to put down. And it, it's like, I kind of, when I have more time to spend on, on painting and stuff, I tend to, to juxtapose between the two. I'll do something cubist, mm -hmm. which is really fun and free. And then I'll go to like doing a landscape or somebody's portrait of a dog or something like that. that has to be more precise. Um, like this, this painting here, I tried to actually combine the two where I was doing something representational, but I was trying to do it with really bold brush strokes. So it looked painterly and it didn't look um, like a photorealism. Um, and that one, I, I, I like the way it came out because of that. So maybe somewhere in the middle between something totally free form and something representational the twain shall meet and you have a real piece of art. Mm -hmm. So did you guys, what's, because this was my first time in, thankfully we only had us, we didn't have like 30 people or something, which would have been <laughs> hard to keep track of. Um, but honestly, I need critique and feedback on uh, how to go forward doing these because <laughs> uh, I want to do more of them. 
No, I thought it was good, Alex. I thought your the way that you set it up, you know, uh, was great. I mean, um, you know, maybe if we could talk more about, you know, color and shading and stuff like that too, that would be good. Okay. Well, maybe another one will do something like, um, I was actually thinking about providing an image and having people print out, I can email the image and you can print, you know, do a, a, a line drawing of it and mm -hmm. send it to you. You print it out and then, but you'd have to print it on watercolor paper. That might be weird to, oh yeah. Anyway, go ahead and take your, take your tape off and, and see how lovely your mountainscape came out. Um, yeah, if, if we do something like, if we're all doing like a flower or a vase of flowers, and, and I think providing everybody with an image that is their goal of what yeah. they want to do. That's a good idea. Yeah. I saw one gal online, um, she has people send her a photo of their dog uh -huh. and then she turns it into a line drawing, sends it to them, they print it out and then they paint on that. And so they paint their own portrait of the oh, dog. Cool. It, that sounded like a fantastic, uh, fun thing to do. Uh -huh. But then there's the coordinating of, um, does everybody have a printer and can they, can they that sharp order? Does everyone have a dog? Yes, or cat or, <laughs> and, you know, whatever. Rhinoceros. Okay, there we go. So now you can sign. That's can you right. see that? <laughs> Alex? What's that? Can you see it? Can I? Oh! Look at how that came out. Nice. That's beautiful. Very nice. <clears throat> came out good. Not bad. Not bad at all. Bad for an amateur. Now I can find it. Dun, 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 dun. So when you sign artwork, do you typically sign a year that was done? I mean, how is that typically done? Is it, or do you just sign your name and have them guess to what year you painted it? Um, I have varied on that. Um, as I get organized, which kind of comes and goes, um, I. Uh, I decided to, to keep the dates of my paintings more on my spreadsheet of my inventory. Uh -huh. And my <laughs> files now, I started, when I take photos of my, my paintings, I now I have files of 2019 paintings, 2020 paintings, uh, yeah. things like that. And so the images are found there when I want to use them for something like upload them to Fine Art America or something like that. Um, and so it's rare that I put a date on a painting, but once in a while I have, you know, it's, there's no, there's no, no, set yeah, there's no standard in the industry of doing whatever. So. No, no. Um, if, if it's uh, say a limited print, um, then they'll number them. And right. Assign them. Yeah. Um, but usually if an artist, a famous artist is followed, usually there is some sort of um, like a biology or something on them and a, and a timeline of, you know, mm -hmm. like, like the blue period that um, Picasso went through. Uh -huh. um, and it was a period of his, of his paintings and a style that he went through that was notated by like art historians and such, you know. Right. Oh, oh right. look at that. That came out great. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> wow. Very nice. Yay. Yeah. We did a, a freestyle 
That oh, was my fun. yeah. The, we're, we're seeing. Oh my God, they look great! I know. Look at Muriel go. When you see yours, Fran, did I didn't I didn't get to see it? I don't think. Wow. See? Lift it up a little bit because your name is blocking it. That there you great. go. Yeah. Looks fantastic. Wow. And there's the freestyle one. Nice. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah, it's just good to, you know, pick it up and, and just nice to have a little guidance and, um, you know, just a safe, comfortable place to yeah, your own practice. And not, you know. It's fun. Thanks, Alex. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you guys all yeah, very thanks much. Thanks for sharing. Thank time you. Time. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah. Good. I hope I hope oh, you can keep keep painting. Keep painting. Well, we got a lot of paint and a lot of paper. <laughs> That's right. Well, also I'm off on Wednesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays. If any of you ever want to reach out and say, "Listen, I want to just paint. Can we paint together on a Zoom?" And I subscribe to Zoom, so um, so it's no biggie, you know. Okay. Yeah, you're off every Wednesday. I'm off. Yeah, Wednesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Nice. Yeah. So, just let me know if you want to, and even if it's spur of the moment, if you say, you know, I really got a hankering to start painting, and I want to paint with somebody, or can you help me with this? Just reach out. We're all uh, with COVID and everything over the last year gotten way too used to just kind of being in our own homes and, and not being super social. Yep. So. Now this was great. Good. Yeah, this is wonderful. <clears throat> we sure miss you. I know, I miss you too. I really do. We'll come and see you as soon as we, as soon as it's safe. Get vaccinated. Yeah. I know it should be, I think for my age group, I think uh, next month they're saying up here to be as early, yeah. right. early as next month for us. Um, but I gotta say the guest house, we worked really hard on, we still haven't finished everything, but we worked hard on getting it fixed up. We painted all the walls. We got some cute furniture in there. Um, and I supplied it with full kitchen stuff. And you guys are kicking butt up there. Are you kidding me? You've done so much work in a couple of months. And you got to leave something for the guests to do. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> what I did is I signed up for this website. We saw a thing on the news about the need for traveling nurses, traveling mm -hmm. medical professionals um, for their housing and stuff. And so there's, they said it on the news. So I figured it must be valid. And it was. Um, there was a website I registered. I put pictures up of the guest house and immediately got a tenant and she's month to month. She knows that she's, she's contracted with one of the hospitals up here for this month. So uh -huh. she knows she's going to be here for this month. She doesn't know if they offer her an extension or if she's going to accept it. She's from Sacramento. Um, uh -huh. But I already have people on the waiting list waiting to find out if it's going to be available in April. Oh, great. Um, That's fantastic. I know. The only thing is, is that, you know, part of my vision was. You got to keep away from her. She's working in a hospital. Oh, definitely. Yeah. We, yeah. She's got her own entrance. It's a separate guest house. Yeah. And she's working nights. I, I don't even see her. Um, I offered her by text. I offered her a piece of uh, the chocolate cake I made last night. And I haven't even heard back. <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, you know, she hasn't gotten back to me. She probably wiped out. But sure. um, anyway, my vision was also to to have that available for friends mm -hmm. having to visit. And so, if I book it all the time, then so what I'm going to have to do is like black black out certain time periods. Yeah. So I can keep it available for friends, but I don't know what my friends' needs are yet when they can come up and visit. Yeah. Well, I'm sure there's plenty of hotel rooms around there too that we can come up and stay in and still visit with you guys. That's so not, not that fun. Deal, That's so. not as much fun. <laughs> no, but it's, it gets us together. Yeah. Well, we also can put an air mattress in, in the living room and stuff like that too. Right. Um, you know, we, we have like, it's actually not an air mat, air mattress. It's a inflatable bed. It's 
more yeah. deluxe than that. But uh, yeah, we can accommodate like one or two people in the house, but we have to be safe and make sure everybody's like vaccinated or something. Right. Sure. Um, or COVID is over with. Yeah. Yeah. Be nice. Yeah. So, but we totally miss our friends and look forward to the day that we can have people come and we can actually show them in person all the cool projects we've done up here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Absolutely. Excellent. All right. Well, thanks for sharing your time with us today. Yeah. yeah thanks so much. This was so much fun. My pleasure. Well, good. Okay. Onward. See everybody right. in the future. Take care. Bye. Bye bye. Bye. I'm touching up. Okay. Ah, oh, it looks beautiful. It looks really good. It'll get there. Sweet. And then I can do another one. Now yeah. all, all these paints and paintbrushes and everything. That's right. And you're getting the hang of it. Excellent. I'm going to sign off. All right. Take care. Have a great day. Say hi to Steve. All right. Say hi to Jerry. Talk to you later. Bye.